really did this and made her dream. It's awesome. We're so excited to be a part of this team. It's a great team. Gina, you got an Olympic daughter. Come on. That's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing, um, especially because, you know, we've talked about this moment. Yes. Hello? Wait, wait, wait. I need to pause. Nellie, wait, I want everyone to pause for a second and look behind Nellie. I see Biles and Childs. Biles and Childs. Biles and, and Ron. Hey, this is hey, Ron. Ron, it's Olympic moms, babe. This is Olympic moms. <laughs> oh, my God. Nellie, do you, I know you've been down this beautiful road before, but how does it feel this time around? It's still... Um, a surreal feeling. It's still hard to put in words and how hard to describe just how proud I am. And I am sure I'm speaking for all the mothers too. It doesn't get old. So it's not as if, um, oh, I've been there, done that. It's still, it just feels this time around even more special. Hey, Sandy, your grace. <laughs> Your grace is going to Tokyo. Your grace is going to be competing for Team USA. Do you ever just sit with that for a second and say like, wow, how did that happen? Yeah, like a million times over, especially with everything she had to overcome this year to even have a shot at coming back. And this team is just full of such amazing talent. It's unbelievable. Yang, your little girl, I know we, we, we talk a lot about your little girl's bond with her dad, but a mother-daughter bond is something that is all by itself. It is so unique. Did you ever imagine that you will be sitting here on the, at the Olympics, you'll be able to watch your daughter uh, compete for Team USA? What is it like to watch your daughter compete? I'm very excited. I mean, it's kind of surreal, like everybody says, you know. I just couldn't believe that she actually made it, you know. Like, <laughs> it is a dream of her and finally made it. It was just so excited and I'm so proud. So. Yang, was she always jumping on furniture? Was Suni always, like, flying <laughs> through the air? Yeah, jumping. Um, she's a pretty, I mean, like, yeah, she would flip and do the wrong thing, do, um, you know, cartwheels everywhere in the house. You know, like I would take her to the party and she would be flipping up the cart Flipping. Too. You know, yeah. <laughs> Danielle, when your daughter was little, how did you know? How did you know that she wasn't going to be just someone who enjoyed gymnastics, but somebody who might be competing at this level? I believe she was about four years old and we were, her dad and I were watching TV and all of a sudden, whoop, there goes a cartwheel. <laughs> and we looked at each other and I said, did you teach her that? And he said, no, did you? And I said, no. <laughs> and uh, so I think we, we kind of knew at that point. You knew in that minute that, she w that there was something different about her. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Good morning, welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. right. We are gonna be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Cheers. 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 We've been watching Chanel bust a move all morning. New meaning, see the expression, rise and shine. Jenna, nearly two miles in the air. This is amazing! Yes. Yes. Your Gampy would be so proud. Oh, thank you, Al. Good morning, welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. We are gonna be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Yes. Talent and perseverance, inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. So, Kim, I want you to close your eyes for a second and describe Thank yourself you. what you feel like watching your daughter compete. Well, can I open my eyes? Or yeah, I yeah, yeah, you can open them. <laughs> Okay. Um, I don't know. This time around was really difficult watching. It was just very, very stressful. 
but yet, you know, you feel at times like you just want to walk out of the arena and not watch because it's just that stressful, but yet you don't want to miss it and you just got to be there. And so you just sit there and you hope that they hit their routine, but it's really rough. <laughs> Well, I don't, I watched Gina move in the stands. Gina, you're moving with Jordan. You're like over here, now I'm over here. Like you're doing everything you can to stay in your seat. How nerve wracking is it watching your daughter compete? It's awful. I wish there was a way to support without physically having to uh, watch it. I always say, I wish I could just blink my eyes and then then know the outcome, but the outcome be good. But yeah, it's been that way since she started as a little level four and it just never changed. And and I try, uh, Ron actually texted me um, because he watched me on TV like the following day and he was like, Gina, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, no, I can't help it. It's just my body just reacts that way. Well, you named her Jordan after Michael Jordan. So, I mean, she was destined, don't you think? She was destined for greatness. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a slightly embarrassing that that's kind of uh, circulated, but it is absolutely the truth. I had waited for uh, one kid to come forward and my husband was like, okay, you can name her whatever you want. And I said, Jordan. <laughs> Jordan, it is. By the way, I love the Biles Childs thing, Nellie, and there, there they were connected. What is it? I mean, I watched them hug. I watched uh, Simone support uh, Jordan. I just, I, I like the bond between them. Tell us about that. I believed um, in the past two years, pretty much, um, Simone has embraced pretty much all the elite gymnasts that have that are now uh, attending our gym. And as the as the time has progressed, and again, Jordan looks up to her and asks for advice. And Simone is there. You know, I mean, we're not playing. This is for real. And Simone really pushes because she pushes herself. And I see her doing the same thing too with Jordan. And that bond has just, I mean, they fight, believe me, they do fight. <laughs> and, and, and then we don't get in the way. I don't get in the way because the next minute, you know, I mean, they are hugging each other. Maybe so no. you just know that that's a special relationship that they have. And, and I think the expectation for each of them is very high. Jordan expects a lot from Simone and vice versa. I, I think it's great. I do too. Sandy, you're the mother of six, am I right? Yes, you are correct. You got one in the back seat with you because you needed to go somewhere. I keep well, seeing- Well, I got a, rid of the other two that were with me, so it's well, only down to one. Well, so, I keep, I keep yes. seeing a hand and a can of soda or something pop up yeah, or whatever. Yeah, he wants to be famous or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, you had six kids. I'm sure people are looking at this widescreen and saying, I want to raise an Olympian. Like, what was in the water? What did they do? So, Sandy, what, what did you do? Honestly, like we were just looking for an outlet for Grace because we found her one day trying to climb the brick on our fireplace, number one, and like trying to figure out how to sit on top of the mantle. And she was a really shy kid. And so we were just looking for a way for her to like get out and meet other people and not hang on her mom's leg all the time. And the minute she walked in the gym, she's like, I'm home. And her older sister was like, nope, not for me at all. <laughs> wow. So what, Danielle, what, what would you say is the secret sauce to raising an Olympian? Oh boy. <laughs> um, well, both her dad and I coach gymnastics. So we felt like it was important that we didn't force it on her in any way. So pretty much just letting her guide the ship and decide what she wanted to do and how far she wanted to take it. I'm kind of bumming that we won't be able to be together at the Olympics. I mean, that is breaking my heart. And I was just thinking about you guys because you've been there for every meet. You've traveled all over the country and in some cases the world. And in this particular moment, you won't be able to be present in the arena to witness this moment. And Kim, I know it was a long time coming for Michaela, but how are you dealing with that? Yeah, it's not fun. Um, but my older daughter is, we're gonna have a big viewing party the night that they do preliminaries and live stream it. It's going to be late. I think it's going to be like 11 o'clock mm -hmm. our time, but we're going to have a huge party and just get a bunch of people together and watch. So it'll be fun, but it is just, it's very disappointing not being able to go. I don't know. It's just been interesting, but this whole COVID thing has been interesting. And for Michaela to even get where she's gotten has been amazing to us. So we're just proud that she made it. 
talent and perseverance inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. nice. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Cheers. Well, we're so proud of all of you guys. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing your little girls in your eyes right now and it's totally blowing my mind. But since you can't be there to hold their hand in the arena, I know that you probably have a piece of advice for them. And maybe it's the same advice you've given them your whole life, I don't know. But if you just had a phrase or something for your little girl before she embarks in this moment, what would it be? Um, Nelly? What, what would you say to Simone? I definitely will tell Simone to be the best Simone. I mean, and she understands what that means. So um, whenever it's her turn to do whatever event, she needs to go out there and do her very best. You know what's funny? She always says that she's calming you down. <laughs> but she is. <laughs> she, she texts you and says, Mom, I'm good. And you're like, is that that's the way it works? That's how it works because I am, I get very nervous um, uh, before competition and Simone really is the one that calms me down. I mean, we would FaceTime me and tell me, mom, I'm fine, um, I'm ready. And it's good to hear her say that, but um, she reassures me and calms me down, which is great. I love that. Gina, what about advice for your little girl before she sets out? You know, something we always uh, tell her dad has a saying that he tells her every single time. And it really sounds like a little kid saying because we started it when she was little, but he said, do your best and forget the rest. And that is, he tells her that every single time she goes out to compete and just in general life. And so we would tell her that, you know, do your best, forget everything else. You've um, earned this moment and you've worked hard for this moment. So you might as well enjoy every aspect of this moment. We're so proud, not because you're an Olympian, but because you're Jordan, and, and we love you. Oh, beautiful. Kim, again for Michaela, long time coming. She just missed the team last year. I know this meant the world. In fact, when she made the team, and I remember that moment at trials, <laughs> she's like, Mom, I did it. Like, I thought that was so cool. She gave you some great words. What, what words do you have for her? Our common saying is, you got this. Hmm. And just go out there and do your best. And when she did say that saying, I couldn't even hear it in the arena. I didn't notice that till like the next day I'm watching video and I hear that and I just cried oh. several times because it meant so much to her to make this team. It, I mean, there were a lot of odds against her with everything she went through with the COVID, the pneumonia and getting back to the point. And it just, it just broke our heart. But anyway, we're so happy, but yeah, just go out there and do it, Michaela. You, you got this. I love that. Raise your hand if your daughter has had or has an injury from gymnastics. 
has had. No. Everybody, has. everybody has. has, every single person. And I mean, there just the idea that she may have a hurt ankle or something may be bugging her. I can only imagine as a mother watching that Yang uh, is extra difficult. And I know that your daughter Suni has been through a lot. You know, your right. husband is was paralyzed from a from just a horrible fall. You've lost loved ones to COVID, and yet there she stands, back straight. Yeah, it's pretty amazing that she actually made it this far. <laughs> yeah, uh, with everything that is going on with um, you know the family with her injury, after injury, and I'm just super proud that she actually made it. It's still kind of like, wow, you actually made it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yang, what, what advice do you guys give her before she competes? Using my husband, we do a pep talk with her. Um, she usually do that um, with us before she goes in our competitions. And um, my husband pretty much gave her like the advice, but I usually just tell her, you know, go out there and have fun, you know? Just do like you always practice, do like the way you practice and just go out there and have fun. This is it, you know? Um, just have fun, enjoy, and do the best you can, because um, it is what it is. I mean, Beautiful. She's great, yeah, so. Uh, Sandy, what advice do you have for, for Grace? Before every competition, I just tell her, you know, go out and enjoy this moment. You work so hard to get here, and just enjoy the whole experience. Take it all in. Enjoy your teammates. Cheer for them. Be, like, the best cheerleader and the best supporter that you can. And go out there and compete for like an audience of one. Compete for God. Let it, you know, just do it. Show people that you really love what you do and just have fun. Yeah, an audience of one. And actually, you're probably kind of right. There will be about an audience of one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nelly, Nelly, you've been down this road before. The other parents have not. Do you have any advice for these moms as they kind of walk into this moment? I believe the best advice would be just to enjoy the moment and just be proud because i mean when you look up the look at the amount of kids that have gone this far our children are are, are the ones that we are watching that the entire world is watching <laughs> and 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 we know that the only reason that they've gotten this far is because they've worked so hard so just cherish this time and cherish the moment and whatever the outcome, I always say, whatever the outcome, you know, just be proud of that outcome. Well, you guys are incredible. I can tell why each and every one of your daughters is going to be on the world stage. They've earned it and they've had support that I can see it pouring out of you. It's as if you're doing it. So I just want to say, go Team USA. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes. This is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. All right, guys, first of all, congratulations. We have one former Olympian, and now all you guys are current Olympians. How are you feeling today, Michaela? I'm feeling great. <laughs> You, this you, is like so unreal. Are you kind of freaking out? I'm freaking out inside, yes. Yeah, so crazy. I've been waiting for this moment forever. Raise your hand if you're freaking out. <laughs> 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 so 
Oh, you too? Yeah, I mean, it's so real. It's It's been a long journey, and me and Michaela have kind of been on it together, so I'm just happy that we're on the same team, and we get to go over there and show what we have. Simone, I know you, and I've known you for a long time, and I love you dearly and deeply. When I see your emotions on display, I feel you. Yeah. I felt you today. Yeah. I yeah. felt you strong. I felt you strong when you were kind of hurting, and I felt you strong when you were feeling it. Just describe how you're feeling this time around. A little bit more tired this time around. I'm, I'm a little bit older, um, so I get tired quicker. I was really happy, but I was just sad because everybody came out here to watch us, and I didn't give them my best performance, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. It is what it is. We yeah. watched you on the floor, okay? Did you see what happened after your floor routine? Yeah, they gave me a standing ovation. That was pretty crazy. The standing o didn't stop. Yeah. It kept going yeah. and going and going. It was and very I, sweet. So how is this one different for you? I don't know. I feel like going into Rio, I was kind of yeah. a kid, didn't really know yeah. too, too much, which there is beauty in going in something mm -hmm. blindsided. But now, like, I'm an adult. I know who I am, and I know what my gymnastics bring. So it's just different. I'm not sure if you were happier when you nailed a landing right. as you were when your girl, Jordan, made the team. Yeah. That hug. <laughs> that <laughs> make me cry <laughs> again. <laughs> she worked so hard, and she deserves it, and I'm just happy she got to go out there this whole entire year and prove what she's capable of. Jordan. Yes. <laughs> you're going to the Olympic Games. You, my friend, are an Olympian. Simone Biles wrapped her arms around you in that moment and I just thought you were never gonna let go <laughs> tell me what it felt like to know you made that team it was honestly the most amazing feeling of my life I already at the beginning was kind of tearing up but I didn't know what the outcome was gonna be so I just wanted to go out there and really show everybody who I am as a person and having her on my, by my side 24 7 and giving me encouraging words every day definitely helped and it was very motivational. I'm very happy to have someone like her. <laughs> Y'all are cute. <laughs> Miles and Childs. <laughs> Does everyone make the joke? Is that, yeah. what, that part of it? Michaela, you had a tough year, boy. I mean, I know that you went through a mm -hmm. lot. I know you had COVID. I know you were hospitalized. Mm -hmm. I know that you wondered, like, am I ever going to get back to my performing best? Mm -hmm. Look at you. <laughs> I, know. I survived. <laughs> but yeah, it was, I mean, I wanted to give up so many times. I was like, I don't even know if I can do this anymore, but I feel like just having these girls in my family, having my back through it all mm -hmm. has really helped me get to where I am. Who's today, the so. oldest one? Is it Simone or is it you? It's me. Wait, <laughs> which one was? Me by three months. Yeah. So yeah. you're both 24, you're three yep. months older. Mm -hmm. So you no longer have the elder, elder statesman <laughs> title. Grandma yeah. has gone over there. I feel like we both share. It's like 50-50. Yeah. 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 Totally. Well, you all do kind of care for the other members of your team. Yeah. And what do you get out of that, Simone? We get our youth back. I mean, <laughs> they keep us going, especially in those workouts mm -hmm. in the gym. And we've had such hard times. But seeing the younger ones come up, it's been motivational. Suni. <laughs> oh, Suni. I'm so happy for you. Thank I can't you. tell you. It just meant the world to me to watch you perform. And I wasn't sure if I was more emotional watching you or watching your dad up there. Did you feel him? I did. It took me a minute to like realize that I was like going to the Olympics. But I looked up there and I knew that he was very emotional and so was the rest of my family. Well, I loved in one of your, one of your interviews you said it's, you didn't describe it as your dream. You said it was our dream. Yeah. Um, this has been our dream for like the longest, basically since I was a baby. He's been by my side through everything, and he's gotten all my competitions with me. So to have him here at the Olympic Trials with me is something that was so amazing, especially because they can't go to the actual Olympics, which really sucks. But It really does suck. Yeah. You're bumming about your parents yeah. not being able to go? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean so this is the last they're going to see of mm -hmm. you until you get your medals, right? Yeah. Until you come home with yeah. your medals. Go I feel like there. there's a lightness with you guys that I don't, I mean, I remember it in Rio, but it feels even a little lighter. Like, I don't know. Definitely. It's like everyone seems to really want to have <laughs> uh -huh. fun. Yeah. And mm -hmm. is that what you're feeling, Michaela, yeah. too? Yeah, I mean, especially coming from college, like, that's all we did. And so yeah. it's kind of been fun to see that more, especially yeah. since, you know, Marta's been gone and with the yeah. new generation. And yeah. I feel like we're just really enjoying our gymnastics. Yeah. Come awesome. on, Jade. <laughs> Jade's going to the Olympics. Oh, my gosh. Has, it, has that just sunk in? I mean, your dad's coaching you. You're going to the Olympic Games. Yeah, um, I'm really excited and I'm really glad that I have my dad to share it with. Um, we've been, he's been my coach for 
the longest time, and I'm just really happy that we're going to be there together. That is true. So your dad's going to be, is that your dad the only parent who's going to be there? Yeah, right, because he, he's I coaching. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, your dad's going to have to share and help yes. out with everybody. So how are you guys going to, like, make sure that you, you're straight when it comes time for competition? Because we all have our posse, our group. I would imagine, uh, Simone, that the group's going to rely on each other even more than before. Yeah. Of course, and we'll, we'll have so many repetitions. And I remember in Rio, it was like, you did so many, you almost can't mess up at that point. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not worried. Once we get over there, we're set. I mean, this is just the beginning of our journey. Michaela, this dream, some dreams take a long time. Some happen overnight, and some take a while. But as they always say, your dream is right on time. Mm -hmm. So as you venture out, and you realize that you're about to step into a big dream. Like what, like how will you sleep tonight? What will you be thinking about? I don't think I'll be sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm especially if I have to get up super early, so yeah. probably no sleep. But you know, even after last Olympics, being so close to it, I'm really glad that I never gave up my dream and I kept going and have pushed myself to come back for this Olympics and it was definitely worth it and it paid off. And even to be here with Simone again, being like the grandmas of the yeah. team, like <laughs> I think it's definitely helped push us as well too. Because yeah. with the younger ones, like it is true, like you're older like you know your gymnastics better but it's still it's harder the older you get so yeah. these young ones have definitely pushed our buttons a little bit it's crazy to have my dreams finally come true well so. I'm I can't tell you how happy I'm for you guys and to do it in this arena it was a sellout they say that it may have been the biggest Olympic trial wow. uh, crowd ever yeah. wow. and it felt like being at a concert yeah. <laughs> and it was wild so when we get to the Olympics, it, it's not going to be like that. You're not going to have that. Right. Do you think it will affect how you perform, Simone? Personally, I thrive under pressure, so I'm a little bit worried how it's going to affect me once we get over there. All right. You guys have any other thoughts as you head off to the Olympic Games in Tokyo? Uh, I think I'm just ready. ready. I, I'm ready. ready. <laughs> I think yeah. I blacked out. I don't know. Yeah. You blacked so out? I'm kind of like yeah. speechless. Uh, you're yeah. speechless. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, and how do you – I know not everybody got to be sitting in these chairs. Is it kind of a bummer when you see your, your fellow teammates who didn't make the, the team? I mean, it's the hardest team to make in the world, so we're all proud of everybody that mm -hmm. even made it this far. How many people can say they went to Olympic trials? So, mm -hmm. I mean, we're just proud of our teammates. Oh, my God, your lives changed just like that. Yeah. <laughs> just like that. Jordan, just like that. Just like Are you really that. named after Michael Jordan? I am. Okay, I just had yes. to. I don't know. I thought yes. it was a rumor. I wasn't no, sure. I am. My mom had a um, big obsession over him, and um, with everything that she was going through, my dad finally said she could name a child after her famous basketball player. So that's me. <laughs> well, Chick, and the rest of oh you my guys. Gosh. Oh, I know your nickname too. You guys, we are going to be cheering you on. You may not have your moms and your dads and your friends, but you'll have us. We so have photos. look for me. <laughs> I will be cheering true. you like, on all the way. Thank Go you. get them! Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of asking man, yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever all played? Right. The unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> What is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice yeah, things. Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. Yeah. I don't want the rap of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cut. Cold Cut. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> okay. All you got to say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yeah. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Oh, look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Okay. Will you judge okay. us in a cook-off? I yeah. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. Hey, 
today all day. Father's Day is this Sunday. I will pause while you go, oh, it is? I was just thinking of stopping by the convenience store and picking up some duct tape and a screwdriver and giving it to Deb. Well, how about this? How about cooking up a special meal? Up next on Saucy, Anthony Contrino is whipping up a hearty pasta dish, plus a surprising sweet treat for dessert that doubles as a great gift. My dad, what a pain in the ass, and a man of few words. What else do we have? <laughs> he really only opens up his mouth to eat. You gotta love him. So for this Father's Day, I'm making him a couple of his favorite dishes that I know your dad's gonna love just as much. For dinner, I'm making pasta al vino with crispy sausage and an irresistibly crunchy breadcrumb topping. Then for dessert, chocolate hazelnut sausage. I know, I know it sounds crazy, but trust me, it is delicious and it just so happens to also make the perfect gift. First up is dessert, our chocolate hazelnut sausage. We wanna get started on this because it needs some time to set in the fridge. So, first things first, I have some hazelnuts. So I'm leaving some whole, I'm gonna chop up the rest and this is gonna imitate or mimic the pockets of fat found in sausage. And it's gonna give the illusion that this is an actual savory sausage. When chopping nuts, throw your hand at the tip of the knife. This will help secure it and help you guide it across the nuts. This does not need to be perfect. Like I said, this is mimicking fat pockets and fat pockets come in all different sizes. So if you have some super fine, that's awesome. And if you have some that are a little bit more chunky, that is fine too. If you're not a fan of hazelnuts, you can use any nut. You can even put in dried fruits. Pistachios and dried cherries would be an amazing substitute. I'm happy with this. Perfect. I need to grab a couple of more ingredients from the pantry, and we're gonna get started on our chocolate ganache. The star of this dish, aside from the hazelnuts, is this chocolate. I like to use 58 to 65% chocolate. The percentage is the amount of cocoa. The higher the number, the darker and more bitter the chocolate. To chop chocolate, I like to use a serrated knife. You have a little bit more control, your knife won't slide on the board, and look how easily it just crushes through this premium chocolate bar. Doesn't need to be perfect because we're melting it. The smaller the chocolate pieces, the quicker they'll melt. And we all know I do not have patience. I'm going to put it right into a bowl. Mm. Okay, try not to eat it. it. Smells so good. To this, we'll add just a couple more ingredients. Plain old granulated sugar. Always level it off, you want the perfect amount. Especially when it comes to desserts. That's when you're supposed to be OCD. Up next, somewhat of an unconventional ingredient, an egg white. What this egg white's going to do is help create a less brittle texture in our final ganache. So, right on in. Then just because I can't do dessert without a little vanilla, just a little bit, enough to help amplify the other flavors going on. And finally, a couple of tablespoons of plain old tap water. We're gonna put this over a pot with barely simmering water. We're not looking to touch the bottom. This is called a double boiler. We want that gentle steam that's wafting to slowly and evenly melt our chocolate without burning it. So just start stirring. This will happen pretty quickly. Very relaxing, very zen, and smells amazing. 
Be sure to periodically scrape down the sides of the bowl. It's gonna help make sure that everything melts properly and avoid scorching along the side. You can see how velvety it's looking. It has a beautiful sheen. Okay, that's it. See how nice and silky it is? Time for the fun part. Let's start making sausage. All that's left is to add our hazelnuts. Just slowly fold them in. Try to get it all coated in chocolate. You don't want to see too much of the nut itself popping out. That's it. And now we play the waiting game. Into the fridge to set for 45 minutes to an hour. Our chocolate mixture has been in the fridge for about an hour, and you can see that there's no wet spots, which means it's not going to be too hard to work with because it's sticky. But if I press on it, it still gives, which means I'll be able to roll it into the sausage log. So I'm gonna grab myself a pretty generous sheet of plastic wrap. And then transfer my chocolate right into the center of it. Now, I'm just going to try to start shaping this into a log using the plastic as a guide to help shaping it. At first, we'll just start getting a general shape, and then we'll refine it. So I like to make my sausage log nine, nine and a half inches, because I think that that's the perfect length and width um, that we'll get with the chocolate when we slice into it. But it doesn't have to be so crazy. If you have OCD, you can use a ruler. So I'm actually just shy of where I want to be. And try to keep it nice and even in diameter. You don't want it to taper too much. Then twist off your sides and tuck them under. This is the first step in shaping our sausage, but I have one more secret ingredient that's really going to give you the illusion that this is the real thing. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now, it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. <laughs> for traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition.
been about an hour, maybe a little more. So I'm carefully going to unwrap it. Grab yourself a fresh sheet of plastic wrap. And now for a little secret ingredient, just some powdered sugar. This is going to give the illusion of that moldy exterior found in a cured sausage or salami. So about a half a cup and just coat it all around and roll it in. It's okay if it's cakey. Make sure you cover it. And then, you guessed it, <laughs> wrap it back up. It needs one more rest in the fridge. At least a couple of hours. We really want to get it nice and solid, but preferably overnight. Surprise! I wasn't going to wait overnight. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. All your hard work. If you can get the plastic off. So as it sits in the fridge, you can see like these wet spots. That's the condensation from the fridge. And that's what's going to really give the illusion of dried sausage. And just carefully get rid of that cakiness. Definitely leave some on. Now to package it up for dad. You can use any food grade paper. I'm simply using parchment. And if you go to like an old school salumeria to get some salami, pretty similar to what you're gonna get at a store. Now, you can leave it simply just like this. Or if you have nothing better to do with your life, like me, maybe add some twine. It's a gift. Make it look like you cared. I'm just going to tie it in a couple of places to secure it. Nothing fancy. My dad's not going to notice. He's just going to wonder when I'm going to cut it open. You do you. You want to tape down the sides? Tape down the sides. Simple is good enough for dad. Our sausage is packed, but I'm not that cheap. So I'm also going to give dad a bottle of his favorite wine. Throw this in a bag and I'm all set for Father's Day dinner. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, 
Download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. When the pandemic started, I was kind of ravaging through my pantry trying to figure out what I can cook because getting to the grocery store was scary and just hard. And I came up with this dish, pasta al vino. So for this recipe, I need two small cloves of garlic. And this is what we're going to use to flavor our crumbs. So we'll get those peeled. Ooh, that was an easy one. Save the rest of the garlic. We're gonna need it for the sauce part of our dish. Perfect. Let's get cooking. I have my skillet. I like to use a nonstick for this over medium high heat. And I'm gonna add two tablespoons of some really good butter. Look how beautiful the color of this butter is. Just let it melt. To that, we're going to grate our garlic using a fine zester. This is so much easier than mincing. Pinch of salt. Melt our butter and cook this for about a minute until it's nice and fragrant, which it already is. Smells divine. Now for the crunch. Panko, half cup of it. Get that in there. And now we're gonna cook this until the panko is crispy and nice and golden. Now just keep stirring. This is one of those things where it's gonna look like you're stirring for a while and nothing's happening, and then all of a sudden, it's done. I like to use panko for this recipe because of its texture. It's crunchy to begin with, and it just is going to add a bite to this dish that takes it to a whole new level. Make sure you scrape down the sides so they don't burn. The pieces that stick to the side of the pot will overcook. You can see it's starting to take on a little color now. We're nearly there. Looking for a nice golden brown, nice and toasty. And there you have it, it's as simple as that. Now, do not leave this in the pan. The pan is hot, these will continue to cook. You'll walk away, come back, and they'll be burnt, and you'll be sad. So immediately transfer it into a bowl. That's all there is to it. Let's make some pasta. I have some beautiful Italian sausage here. Take that out. Then our leftover garlic from those breadcrumbs. Just thinly slice four large cloves. You can never have enough garlic, right? Okay. Next up, we have an onion. One large yellow onion. It's going to add a little sweetness to this dish. Not too much, just enough. And we'll just slice these into thin half moons. Canned artichokes. I always have canned artichokes in my pantry. They're great in salads. I actually use it for pesto. And of course, my pasta al vino. And we're just gonna give these a rough chop. Not too small. We wanna leave some texture in the dish. Okay. I, I don't even know if I do recipes without pecorino cheese anymore, but pecorino. A nice, healthy portion. Measure that out so it's ready to go. There you have it. Let's get cooking. Let that get nice and warm. And in the meantime, back to our beautiful sausage. We want to remove the casing so that we can break up the meat. 
peels right off. And if you want to get a head start and kind of use your hands and break it into small pieces, we're going to break it up into bite-sized chunks. You want everything to kind of be around the same size. So these onions will cook down. We have these bite-sized artichoke hearts, so we want bite-sized bits of sausage. Because we're making such a delicate white wine sauce, I prefer to use the sweet so that the wine really stands out. Mm, perfect. Use a slotted spoon and transfer our sausage to a bowl, leaving all the rendered fat behind and that flavored olive oil. Don't worry about all of this fond. It's all flavor, and when we add the white wine, it'll pull it out. Perfect. Another couple of tablespoons of butter right into this hot skillet. Mm. And then in go our onions. We're going to cook these for about 10, 12 minutes. We're not looking to get them super caramelized, just light amber and softened so that they have a nice bite when we serve our finished dish. Get that nice and coated in that butter. Oh, it smells so good. Every component of this dish just smells so good. I'm gonna throw in just a little pinch of salt. Season in layers. The sausage is salty, so you don't need to add too much. And we have a couple more ingredients that are gonna add a saltiness to this dish. Speaking of salt, let's not forget about our water. A lot of waiting this episode, a lot of waiting. Hurry up and wait. I think this is as rolling of a boil as we're gonna get out of this machine. Now that our onions are close to being halfway there, time to drop our pasta. My favorite, bucatini. Only using a half pound, this serves two people generously. But you can double this recipe if you're feeding a family of four, or if you want a ton of leftovers. We're gonna finish our pasta in the sauce, so I am gonna cook it about a minute, minute and a half shy of al dente. Apparently there's a shortage of bucatini, so if you're having trouble finding it because you don't have the hookup like I do, you can use fettuccine, linguine, or even a fun shape like cavatappi will work for this. Okay, another minute or two, we're ready to move on with this sauce. So let's add all of our garlic. And our artichoke hearts. We're not really looking to cook them at this point. We're just looking to warm everything through allow that fragrant to really permeate this sauce. Doesn't this look great? You know what's up next. Some wine. No need to ever measure wine. You always have to eyeball. And you see how it's just automatically just taking all that flavor that's stuck on the bottom of the pot and melting it away. All that flavor is just melting right into our sauce thanks to that white wine. Also going to add some chicken base. And it's just a concentrated paste that adds almost like an umami, just a delicious salty flavor that just enhances the dish. I even add it to chicken stock when I'm making it just to boost the flavor a little bit and that'll melt right in there. Okay, look at that. And I think our pasta just so happens to be ready. Oh yeah. Try to get all of it. I think I'm grasping at nothing. Okay, give that a little rosy. Now, some starch water, which is gonna help Bind everything together. You can always add more to get the right consistency. And then let's start adding everything else. Our sausage goes back in. And then there goes our cheese. 
just toss it up. The cheese will melt into the sauce. That starch water will help thicken it up a little bit. You wanna cook it for about a minute or two here, just long enough for the sauce to be perfect and for our pasta to reach the perfect al dente. You can see that sauce is starting to already look nice and luscious. I'm gonna add a drop more of our starch water. You never want a dry pan. That just about does it. The only thing missing at this point is a bowl. And our breadcrumb topping. Can't forget about the breadcrumb topping. Make sure you grab some of the sausage, some of the artichoke hearts, those onions. We want to get a little bit of everything in there. That looks like a nice portion for one, no? Definitely need a little bit more cheese. And of course, look at this. Do not be cheap. Let's give it a try. It is so good. The white wine just ties all these ingredients in together, but this crispy topping just really hits it out of the park. Pretty sure my dad will like it, but if he doesn't, I really don't care because I sure do. Tonight, we're on the scene as the urgent search for survivors is underway after the deadly collapse of a high-rise building. Buildings don't fall down in America like this. The Delta variant. What does this mean for people who are fully vaccinated? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Press Chuck Todd cast free wherever you get your podcasts for breaking news in our changing world download the NBC News app talent and perseverance inspiring America I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity so many reasons to cheer for that young lady NBC nightly news with Lester Holt I'm rolling up my sleeves for science so I'll survive if I contract this virus for family dinners, family vacations, family anything, for traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. My chocolate sausage is the star of any dessert board. I like to dress it up with my favorite biscotti, Sicilian Regina cookies. Some fruit leather. It's so fun and kind of looks like strips of prosciutto, no? A few little candies, something fresh, and even marshmallows. This gorgeous sweet charcuterie board is now ready for prime time. Came out very good. The artichokes are very good. Remember which of your sons cooks you a Father's Day meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, according to your plates, I think I know the answer, but what'd you think? It was horrible. No, it was delicious. Got some dessert. Delicious. Looks good. Those look good too, the plain. I'm not going to get invited Make back. Make the meat look good. <laughs> the sausage is very good. Here. <laughs> You're going home with some chocolate sausage. Okay. No. And a bottle of your favorite wine. Oh, boy. Oh, thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Well, happy Father's Day. Thank you. Thank you for cooking. Yeah, thank you.
I feel like as soon as I walk in the door, they can kind of detect my mood coming back from practice. Whether it's good or bad, they're always here to cheer me up and put a smile on my face. And Lila's more of like my emotional support pet. She's just here to be happy and have a good in life. Like, and Rambo's more of like, I'll make you laugh. I'm gonna do something crazy today. I can never get mad at them. They just crack me up. They're, they're just the best dogs and they make me so happy. And they're my fur babies. I'm Sma Biles and this is my pet tail. This is Lila Biles and she is three years old. And then this is Rambo Biles and he is one years old. These are my babies. Rambo, when he came to us, his name was originally Rambo. And so I just thought that was cute and I kept his name. And then Lilo, I could not figure out a name for the life of me. And I just thought later down the road, if I got another Frenchie, it would be Lilo and Stitch because I think they look like Stitch. And so that's how her name came about. And then I just kept Rambo's. So we don't have Lilo and Stitch, but we do have Lilo and Rambo. So Lilo, I actually flew to Florida to pick her up when she was a puppy. And that was our first meeting. She was so itty bitty and I had to find like a pet friendly hotel. And she did an um, amazing job. Same as the flight, she did great. And she's more of the chill, calm, laid back dog. Rambo's the more rambunctious. Let me see what I can get into, what I can find around the house. Um, let me test the other dog's buttons. But he actually came from Ohio and he was on like a pet transport bus. So he stopped in several states on the way to drop off other people's new puppies. And so he um, arrived right at my front door here in Spring, Texas. I love how Frenchies have such big personalities and each of them have different personalities. Rambo is the more hyper playful dog and Lilo is my little grumpy, I do what I want when I want princess girl. Oh my goodness, well I grew up with dogs. So as soon as I got them, as soon as I got Lilo and as soon as I got Rambo, I just knew they fit right in and it was the perfect home for them. I think since every weekend we have Sunday dinner with my family, I would always take Lilo and she met the German Shepherds and that's when I knew she'd fit in seamlessly with the other family dogs. Um, and then Rambo, he's just a little copycat. He is Lilo's shadow. So whatever Lilo does, he does and that's how I knew he fit in perfectly. He keeps us on our toes. Rambo loves to play with my boyfriend's dog, Zeus, which he's an English bulldog. They love to play around the house. Lilo's more of a, I'm gonna watch and see what you guys do and I'll sit on the couch while you guys are on the floor playing. And she's just a chill dog, but it was a very seamless relationship. They got along well together and then we have three dogs. So we have a house full of bulldogs, which is so crazy. I never thought I would have three dogs so young, but it is what it is and they make our lives. Uh, well, they love going outside and playing in the backyard. We also have a pool, so they love exploring the ledge. And so they cool off whenever they want. We like taking them on walks, but we like playing catch with them or who can keep the ball away the longest, but they're just so smart. Um, what else? They love treats. They love, we have a dog wash station here in the house. They love getting baths. Well, Lilo and Zeusty Rambo is more of, I'm gonna jump off this thing. But yeah, I'm then going to the pet store. They like doing that and picking out their own treats or toys. Sometimes I'll take them to the gym um, so they can kind of see where I train. And there was like this one picture of Lilo watching me vault and it was just the cutest thing. But I do try to alternate and take them to the gym. So they're in that atmosphere and the kids love them. Whenever they get out of their classes, they always make sure to stop by Lilo or Rambo and pet them. Um, so they've been on this journey with me. I think just being in that competitive mindset again, being out there performing, doing what I love and I train to do, I think that's what I'm most looking forward to. So Rambo has a crazy pike stretch that he does every day. Whenever he sits down, he just sits in a pike stretch. And I just wish my hamstrings were as flexible as his because I know I'm getting shy we're talking about you. And it's just the cutest, funniest thing, but I swear his hamstrings are more flexible than mine. I wish we could trade for a day because I might need him. I didn't teach him, it's just how he sits. Lila does not sit like that, she's a little bit. So I'm a little thicker, but she doesn't sit like that. I 
know some other Frenchies feel like that, but I just never seen it. And I thought he would grow out of it because he did it when he was a puppy and he just turned one and he still does it. I'm like, okay. So I think it's just a forever thing, but it's so cute. If either of these guys could talk, this is what they would say. Lilo would definitely be sassy, like, no, mom, I'm not doing that. I do what I want when I want. And I'm more of just like, okay, this is your house. I'm living in it. And Rambo would probably be asking all the questions like, why can't I grab that? Why can't I eat that? Why can't I do that? He would be the more like questionable, like, why can't I just do this, mom? Right? Or can I go outside? Can I do this? It's more of the explorer. My dogs have made my life better significantly. They have made me happy when I'm at my low. And even whenever I'm at my highs, they've made it higher. They've just been the greatest asset that I could have got. And I don't regret it one bit. The amount of work that it takes to have two of these little pups, I wouldn't trade them for the world. Oh, they're like going to sleep now. They're like, okay, we're out, mom. Well, enough camera time for me, I'm shy. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Good evening tonight from Geneva, just hours away from his historic summit. Over 16,000 unaccompanied children tonight in custody. What's victory look like in this? Or what does improvement look like? It's going to be a challenge to meet that 70% goal. Why is it so challenging? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. right. Yeah. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yeah. Cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers. We've been watching Chanel bust a move all morning. New meaning. See the expression? Lies and shine. Jenna, nearly two miles in the air. This is amazing. Yes. 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 Your Gampy would be so proud. Oh, thank you, Al. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Good evening tonight from Geneva, just hours away from his historic summit. Over 16,000 unaccompanied children tonight in custody. What's victory look like in this, or what does improvement look like? It's going to be a challenge to meet that 70% goal. Why is it so challenging? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. I have two dogs. One's named Bella, she's a German Shepherd, and then I have a German Shepherd Husky mix. I got my younger one after Worlds. She was a bribe or a bet from my mom that, you know, if I made the Worlds team, I can get a dog, and so that's what I got. <laughs> I was like, Mom, can, if I make it to Worlds, can I get a dog? And this was in January, and I wasn't even on, like, the national team. I hadn't made an international assignment, so it was kind of like a, yeah, that's fine because it wasn't really in reach or it didn't seem. And so then when I made it, I was like, hey, I get a dog now. <laughs> I think it's always, you know, fun to come back home and have them like so excited to see you. I mean, your family's always super excited too, but it's really, you know, cool to see how excited they are when you come back home. They just want, you know, to, you to pet them and give them all the attention. I think it's really cool. I have two dogs. One is a... Uh... Yorkshire Poodle Mix, and she's just like really fluffy and a big ball of energy, um, and her name's Dolly. And then I have um, a Boston Terrier, and her name's Guinness, and she's like, she's pretty old, so she's just kind of chill and doesn't really do much. <laughs> Whenever I get home, they're always so happy, um, so just like, if you had a bad day, it makes like a bad day better just coming home and them just wanting to play and being all happy. I have Marshall, who is a Bull Terrier mix, and I have Lily, who is a Yellow Lab, and it's, if you don't put it together, it's Marshall and Lily from the How I Met Your Mother show. Well, my girlfriend and I, we, we, when we first started dating, How I Met Your Mother was like our show, and Marshall and Lily were like the role model couple, and so as we got our dogs, we just wanted them to have, you know, the perfect Marshall and Lily relationship. And 
Henceforth, Marshall and Lily became their names. I wouldn't say that Marshall and Lily are the best, you know, they're not, they're not the Marshall and Lily in the TV show, but I will say that their love is very deep-seated and it comes out in a lot of times, but there are times when Marshall's a little bit of a grump butt and he will, you know, because he really likes Mia and I and he was raised without Lily in the house and so there are times where he is getting snuggles from Mia or I. Lily will hop up and he'll just be like, like, don't get in the way of my snuggles right now. But beyond that, I would say, I mean, Marshall and Lily, if one of them were to leave each other, they would be absolutely devastated. And they do have this deep-seated connection of just, I don't know, playfulness. And it's really nice to see because we're not always home all the time. And to have for them to have each other just means a lot for us to watch them still enjoy each other. They're there for me every single day. Any day that I can come home, have them just jump on me and give me kisses on the face, I'm now a much happier person in that moment. There's no guarantee about it. And there's times, you know, when things are going rough in the gym and my body hurts and I just need to be a vegetable for a little while and they'll just come support and always just pick me up. My pets have given me a lot to look forward to, but I think the most rewarding part about having pets is the fact that you get to care for someone else other than yourself and build them up and turn them into something that you actually want to love and be around all the time. And they give you back so much more than you give them. And something about having that type of relationship that's constantly building is what brings meaning to having, you know, someone to take care of. So I got Stu in March. I was actually overseas still. He is a Aussie Doodle mix. He has like one blue eye and one half blue and brown eye and like a marrow coat. He makes my life better because even though I wasn't expecting to be hurt, he was there for me throughout my whole rehab process. And you know, it's, it always puts a smile on your face when you have like a dog who wants to play. He doesn't know anything else. He was afraid of my cast in the beginning, but uh, we got over that. My dog is Rooney. We call her Roo for short. She's a bull mastiff mi mixed with German Shepherd and Rottweiler. We rescued her from Craigslist and I love her so much. My favorite part of the day is taking her out on walks and it really calms me down after a stressful day. We can go out, we can play fetch and for whatever reason, it's really therapeutic and she's always so happy to see me and it make it just, brightens my mood as well. So she's just the best. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Good evening tonight from Geneva, just hours away from his historic summit. Over 16,000 unaccompanied children tonight in custody. What's victory look like in this, or what does improvement look like? It's going to be a challenge to meet that 70% goal. Why is it so challenging? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
I remember I wanted a dog my whole life. My dad never got me one. But coming up to the last months before 2016 Olympics, I was really sad without a dog. And I would just sit there looking out the window like, oh, I wish my dog was here even though I don't have one. And I was looking out the window thinking about a chocolate lab. And I was like, Mango is the perfect name for a chocolate lab. And I was like, what am I talking about? Mango's the perfect name for any dog that I get. So I went and I got a German Shepherd and I was like, you're Mango. His personality is exactly like mine. He is very hyper and energetic and I'm attached to him, he's very attached to me. You can tell when we're in the same room, he's my dog. <laughs> Mango does everything with me. He goes with me to the bathroom. He goes with me to the sink, to the refrigerator. He loves coming to practice with me, though that's probably his favorite thing. He comes to practice with me every day and plays in the backyard and just watches me lift weights. He would win the 100 meters. My dog is faster than yours. A hundred percent, I promise. <laughs> and I'm talking to everybody. <laughs> Mango has made my life better in every aspect. He is my, my little baby, my little best friend. He makes me happy when I'm sad and I just need him in my life. My dog is Arthur. He is a mutt. He's a dachshund, Jack Russell, Chihuahua, something. Um, he's 15 pounds, black and white spots. Very, very good at snuggling. Arthur is either feisty or super chill, he doesn't really have a lot of in-between, so he's either like barking at the front door, which drives me crazy, or snuggling on the couch, and um, or snuggling when I nap. And that's my favorite version of him, is the snuggly side. I purposely adopted a small dog because I know how tired I am after practice, and I wanted a dog that literally I could walk to the coffee shop a half mile away and walk back and he'd be pooped. We go on little walks to get coffee and that's really nice. His best friend is a Rhodesian Ridgeback that's 120 pounds and so if him and his best friend are together, we can go to the dog park, but he doesn't like to do that unless his bodyguard best friend dog is there. So he's kind of just a chill couch dog with me primarily. I got hurt. Um, I had a stress fracture that kept me out of competing at the World Championships in 2013 and that's when I adopted Arthur because I needed happiness in my life and I needed some joy in my days. And so I adopted him then when I was going through that injury and he definitely brought me joy and happiness and made me not stress and be too much in the weeds about my injury. So that was the start of uh, my relationship with Arthur and it was very important for me. Arthur is not athletic. Sweetie, he's so sweet. I love him so much, but he's not an athlete. So I'm not gonna insult any Olympic sport by claiming Arthur would be good at it because he's not athletic. This is Winnie. Winnie the Miniature Dachshund. Winnie the Mini Winnie is her nickname. And she's really helped make mine and my wife's life better just to be able to have somebody goofy running around the house at all time that isn't six, seven is nice. Um, <laughs> she, um, is, this is about as big as she's gonna get to, and it's nice to be able to have a best friend um, for my wife and I that can do all the traveling with us and they can really just um, bring some joy to our lives. And you know, there's just something so simple about ha <laughs> having somebody around that only wants to love on you and uh, eat food. <laughs> so Milo is my mutt of a dog. We're not exactly sure what he is, but he's very cute. And uh, we got him when he was just six weeks old and my girlfriend was just, she initiated the conversation by saying, I think I want a dog. And then about four hours later, she owned a dog. Um, so it was very just run of the mill. And then, you know, that same night, went to Petsco and got him a bed and some toys and things. And he's really spoiled. And, you know, he gets to travel with us a lot. And he's just, he's a good dude. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science. So I'll survive if I contract this virus for family dinners, family vacations, family anything, for traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Good morning, welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. right. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Hoda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Cheers. 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 Che
I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I can track this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. I have a dog. His name is Ripley. He's a Blue Merle Australian Shepherd. He is the light of my life and, you know, keeps a smile on my face every single day, no matter what happens. I think I have my dog as something to just always make me feel positive and happy. He really is my best friend and he is my little training buddy and partner in crime and comes with me whenever I go do my workouts. Um, and you know, he's, he's my dog. He's my relentless supporter and I love him. <laughs> I have a little fur baby by the name of Mila, and because she's so pretty like Mila Kunis, and um, she is, we rescued her as a puppy, she was like about 10 weeks old they thought, and she's a lab pit mix I think, we're not really sure, but that's my guess, and she is the most human creature I have ever met. Everyone that comes over says she's so full of expression and if any dog just is gonna talk one day, it's gonna be her because we literally talk to her all day, every day, and she runs the show at the house. A few weeks after getting Mila, um, I actually broke my leg and uh, that was a few months after my mom had also passed away, and so I ended up spending a lot of time um, at home with Milo, training her and doing rehab and therapy when she was a puppy. And I think that that was really special uh, for me to get that time with her as a puppy and trying to get up and down the stairs on crutches with an unpotty trained dog was difficult, <laughs> but it was a uh, it was a special time for me, and then she's also been there now throughout my husband's injury. She hasn't missed a therapy session of his in years, so she goes there every morning and waits, waits for him to come there, so I think that she's just a little bundle of joy. Ollie is my rescue dog. My mom and dad are incredible. They took him for three months over the winter because we were training in California and living in like a dorm situation and he couldn't be there. Everyone's helped raise Ollie <laughs> and having Ollie in my life is so amazing. Obviously because my husband is gone and um, it helps to just have a little companion there. But it's also been really nice to have someone, a dog to be responsible for. Um, outside of rowing and it helps me to manage some of my stress to just kind of put my focus and my energy into him and make sure that he's getting what he needs and his face is also very cute and relaxing so that helps too. Our one, he was supposed to be 100% lab but I think he's half lab half Weimariner. He's very skittish and kind of anxiety that's the one that eats the ornaments <laughs> and he's like or he's supposed to be a charcoal lab but I think he's a little bit wine runner, or a lot. And then I uh, have one English red fox lab also, that's three. And he's just like, man's man, sits around, does nothing, easy going, uh, like sunbathing in the backyard and hanging in the garage while I'm stickering boards. <laughs> I'm Floyd's dad, it's kind of a weird term, but yeah, that's my dog. <laughs> Floyd's been incredible for me for recovery and uh, just kind of unwinding from a long day of practice and stress. It's just, it's really easy to go home when you open the door and your dog runs at you and it's a bulldog who can't really run. It's more of a waddle and, and pretty much half out of breath by the time he gets to you. It's pretty cute, but um, he's definitely an interesting being. He's not really a dog, he's more of a creature. He doesn't, has no normal dog tendencies. Oh my gosh, I love my animals so much and um, they haven't been able to be physically there, but I have so many pictures. My phone is literally all my pictures of my animals. You know, it's crazy because it's the sweetest thing when I travel and then come home, 
they they know me they like it's so crazy and it's just their oh my gosh just my mom too on facetime whenever i do time <laughs> facetime my mom i think that's probably one of the most important things during the games is that you can get so wrapped up in focusing and getting anxious and excited and nervous at the same time but then when i'm on facetime all the nerves just go away and i'm just like oh my i'm that person screaming into my phone and like squealing like a little kid and um, oh my god, I just love them. Um, my first friendship was, and like, besides my mom, was an animal. We got our buddy who's not there, but I love animals so much. And I don't know if it's because I, I'm such, I'm that weirdo where I will cry if there's an animal being hurt in a movie, but I can watch a person, whatever. It's really sad. I probably shouldn't admit that, but I just, I don't know if it's because like they don't have a voice and I really want to like, I don't prov not provide for them, but just like love them so much, and they love us unconditionally. They love me unconditionally. Even if you forget to feed them one day, they don't remember that. And I, oh my gosh, I mean the world's just so amazing with animals, and way better with animals. I was walking Reese, and this girl was like, "Oh my God, that's Reese! Like it's Reese!" And I was like, "What?" And then they're like, "Wait, if that's Reese, that must mean that that's Chloe." I was like. <laughs> You people know what my dog looks like and then you realize it's me like she's like more famous than I am. Hi, it's Chloe Kim and this is my pet tail. <laughs> she goes, this is my cute little Australian Shepherd Reese. She is four years old and she is my best friend. I've always wanted an Australian Shepherd like since I was a kid. I've just always wanted one. So I went online and found her. She was actually all the way in Texas. And the day I was going to go pick her up, um, something came up. So my dad had to fly to Texas to go pick her up. So <laughs> my dad's such a trooper, but he flew to Austin and um, met, picked her up there and then flew back with her like an hour later. And um, my dad just like came, walked out of the terminal like with this little chubby spotted dog and I just put her in her lap in my lap and um, it was just love at first sight she like would follow me around everywhere she was my first puppy like I've never had a puppy before so I had no idea what I was doing she was like had really bad separation anxiety in the beginning so I remember like sleeping with her like downstairs in the living room on like a body pillow so uncomfortable but I did that for like three days and then I was like okay maybe I should just let her you know do her thing at night. She actually kind of looked like a Reese's Pieces when I first met her because she had like these really like dark brown spots, these really white, white spots and like like her little caramel spots. So I just thought she kind of looked like a Reese's Pieces. So it took me a few days and then I decided I wanted to name her Reese. Reese has the biggest personality. She is just so down for an adventure. Like the minute I stand up, she's like, okay, cool. Where are we going? Like, what are we doing? I'm like, chill, like, I'm just gonna go to the bathroom or something. But she'll like, always follow me around. She's just down for anything. She loves to play. She loves her ball. She loves spooky balls. She also loves the little like doggy puzzles where you like, where she like does the little puzzles to like find treats. And she's really smart. And she's just the little cuddle bug. She's kind of standoffish sometimes. Like, she's like, okay, mom, like, stop petting me. Like, I don't want love. But the minute she wants love and attention, she'll just snuggle up to you and just, like, flop on your lap, kind of like this. And then she'll just stay for hours. Reese quickly became, like, a very important member of the family. When I told my family I wanted a puppy, like an Australian Shepherd puppy, everyone was so against it. Like, because, you know, I understood because I travel a lot and, um, that would mean like they'd have to take care of her while I was gone. And then we got her and my sisters came over one day when she was still like a baby. We got her when she was like eight weeks old. So when she was still a baby, they came and they instantly fell in love with her because she was like so small and just like just this cute little bundle of joy and energy. And now they argue over who gets to watch her when I'm gone. It's like my parents want her, but then my sisters want, my one sister wants her, but my other sister really wants her. So they're always just arguing about who gets to keep her. <laughs>
everybody, I'm Dylan Dreyer, and we are so excited you're joining us for a quick sweat today. We've got Walter from Obey Fitness who is guiding us through a full body and booty focused workout. So stretch it out, grab some water. We'll get started in just a minute. What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this by infrastructure deal? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. My name is Walter Kim from Obey Fitness, and this is your 10-minute full body strength class. For the next 10 minutes, you need no equipment other than the will to want to do better than you did yesterday, all right? Starting with three-point lunges. Point A is a lateral lunge, bringing it right back. Point B, you take it to a back lunge, locking out as you stand up. Point three, curtsy, take your bow, and we repeat. Let's go. Hook it out, nice, bring it up. Take it back, nice, stand it up. Here we go. Curtsy, take your bow, nice, again. All right, y'all, we're gonna hit this for about 30 more seconds. Nice, all right. Try to get that knee as close to the floor without you actually touching the floor, right? Give me that curtsy. You wanna keep those hips super square. Bring it right back. We're almost there, y'all. Make sure you poke that booty out. <laughs> yeah, I said it. Take it back. Lock it out. Take your bow. Stand it up. Again, let's go. Push. Nice. Stand it up. Here we go. Point B. Nice. Bring it up. Again, 10 seconds. Stay with it. And we're going to do this exact same thing on the right side because you know what goes left goes right. What goes up goes down. It's the circle of life, baby. Right here. Stay with me. Curtsy. Easy breezy. Beautiful. Walter Kemp, baby. One more. Here. Nice. Lock it out. Take it back. Point B. This right here is three-point lunges, y'all. Nice, y'all. All right, same exact thing. Let's go right. Beautiful. Stand it up. And when I say stand up, I want you to stand up physically, and I want you to stand up emotionally, mentally. I want you to really rise up, all right? No more giving up on yourself. We got 10 minutes to stay focused, 10 minutes to give ourselves our all. How many times in life you give 10 minutes to someone else? Today is all about you. I said it. I want you to be selfish today. It's all about you. Where you at? You right there. I see you. Nice. We're almost there, squad. When I say almost there, where is there, Walter? There is a higher version of yourself, all right? That's what we're working towards, all right? Nice. Take it right back. Point B. Right there. You see that bend that's happening with the knee? Nice. And if your knee doesn't get as close to the floor as mine, so be it. Just move. Just move your body, all right? The good thing about this is you can always come back. <laughs> all right. Nice. Squeeze the core as you come up. Try not to hinge, but simply stand up. That's right. I said it. Stand up. Let's go. All right, y'all. I'm going to give you a minute just to enjoy it. Enjoy it, right? Take it back. I want you to push off that left leg. That's the leg that we're working. Right there, right there. You want to keep those hips super square, Walter. I hear you. Don't yell, baby. <laughs> Here you go. No equipment means what? No excuses. Let's go. All I need is you, baby. 
All I need is you. Let's go. But you got to have the will to try to do better than you did yesterday. Stay with your boy. Lock out. Uh-huh. Push it back. Uh-huh. Take it right up. Nice. Take it back. Yes, I approve. I approve. Baby, you showed up. I approve, okay? Now, the real success is in completion, all right? The real success is in getting it done. If you need to take a break, take a break. But don't give up, all right? Nice. Let's go. A delay is not a denial. Remember that. A delay is not a denial. Right here. Your time is now, baby. Stay with Walter. Take it back. Nice. I felt that one. Let's go. Curtsy for daddy. Stand it up. All in, full out family. Here we go. Push. Stand it up. I'm starting to sweat already. I love it. I love it. I love it. I like to call this success, all right? Y'all might be dripping in sweat, but I'm dripping in success. Who's ready to join me? Push it out. Stand it up. Squeeze that core. Keep that rib cage down. I'm talking to you. Here. Nice. Bring it right back up. I see you. Nice. Right here. All right, beautiful, all right. Now we got one more leg exercise that's gonna get the legs and the core involved, all right? So go ahead and turn sideways if you want. If not, keep your focus on daddy, all right? Left leg is gonna go back. We're gonna pulse for two and step it up. Now, here, we like to level up sometimes. And if you wanna level up, all you have to do is step, drive the knee up. That's gonna get that core involved. Let's go. Pulse. Step, knee, drop. Let's get it. Pulse. Step, knee drive, drop. Stay with me, y'all, because we're crossing over to arm land pretty soon. Step, drive it, stop. Switch! Ah! All right, y'all, listen, when the beat drop, I can't help myself. Keep those hips square, take that right leg back. We pulse, nice. Stop, knee drive, and drop. Don't stop. Pulse. Nice. Stop, knee drive. Listen, who said we couldn't have fun? I don't know who's been telling you these lies. Who said fitness isn't fun? You haven't been working out with me. Let's go. Step it in, knee drive. Yeah, y'all. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. How can you not love getting stronger? How can you not get excited that you're going to not only look better, but you're about to feel better in 10 minutes? Go. Drive. Who can give it to me twice more? One. Step. Drive that knee, but use the core to drive that knee up. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Last time. Here. Nice. Step. Knee drive. Ooh, all right, y'all, here's the thing. We're crossing over into arms. Now, we have a try by ISO crush. Whoa, what was that? I know. So here's what we do. Let me see that palm. Yes, like, like you're gonna give me some money or I'm about to give it to you, however you decide, all right? You're gonna take the opposite hand. You're gonna grab on that palm and the left arm is gonna be working the tricep while the right arm is working the bicep. We're gonna push and push, go, push. Now it seems like I'm doing nothing right now, but we're working on time under tension, all right? The muscle right now is creating so much tension. I'm using that left arm to push with that tricep while that right arm is pulling with that bicep. I'm shaking because I'm working, all right? No judgment. I'm not judging you, don't judge me, I'm shaking. It's hard. Let's go. Nice. Now go ahead and take a deep breath. Yes. Keep squeeze. You see that bicep popping, baby. You see it. We working. Nice. All right, y'all. Stay there for 15 more seconds, and we're going to do the opposite side, right? So I say this all the time. If you're looking for maximum muscle growth, any type of static hold, this is a hold combined with what? Time under tension. Nice. Woo, shake it out. Nice and easy. Same exact thing. Let me see that left palm. Give me my money, honey. Right there. Nice. All right. Now the right tricep is working while the bicep on the left arm is pulling. Stay with me. You can do this. I can do anything I put my mind to as long as I put my grind to it. What does that mean? I work for it. I work for it. Isn't it so much better when you work for it? It is. You cherish it a little bit more. All right? This is something I know. I'm not telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> right there. Let's go. I was in the same position, y'all. 
I was in the same position. I wanted it fast, but you know what? Easy come, easy go, so work for it. Stay with Walter, I'm still working. It seems as if I'm not, I'm still working. I'm shaking because I'm working. I see you, hold it. Squeeze that core, tuck it, Walter, there we go. Nice, give it to me for 10 seconds. Nine seconds, don't move, eight. Hello biceps, we got five seconds. Squeeze that core, drop that rib cage. Three, two, who's number one? You're number one, and don't you forget it. Take it down to the floor. We got a little bit of a combo move, all right? We're gonna bridge, and then we're gonna hit the toes with a toe crunch. Take the palms down right here. You're gonna bridge it straight up. Drop it down to the floor, raise the feet up, touch the toe. Yes, let's go. Bridge it straight up, drop it down, feet is up. Touch the toe. This right here is your final, final push up. Nice. Come on, y'all. Who said you couldn't get a great workout in in 10 minutes? I didn't. Up. Nice. Let's go. Flex those toes. Touch the toe. I really want you to go for the toe, not the ankle. Get it up. Keep that chin towards the sky. Toe. Give it to me two more times. Up. Drop. Feet, toe, last time, up, drop, rise up, touch the toe, feet are down, use the core to sit up, y'all. You feel that? There's so much control happening right here. My name is Walter Kemp, the number two from Obey Fitness. Don't give up on me and I will not give up on you. See you guys next time. Peace. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this bipartisan infrastructure deal? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Seen as the urgent search for survivors is underway after the deadly collapse of a high-rise building. Buildings don't fall down in America like this. The Delta variant. What does this mean for people who are fully vaccinated? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're gonna take 10 minutes to work those glutes right now. Yes, I said 10 minutes to work those glutes, all right? If you need to take some time to warm up, go ahead and do so. But as for me and the crew, we're gonna get going, starting with our feet about hip width apart, core tight, and most importantly, my mind is right, all right? Go ahead and plant yourself in the now. Here we go, it's drop and squeeze. Don't hurt your knees. Let's go! All right, y'all, we're gonna take about 45 seconds right here. Just standard squats. Now let's talk about squats while we're here. You wanna make sure that the weight is back on the heels. Nice. You wanna make sure the chest is up. You wanna make sure the core is tight, and most importantly, your mind is right. Drop and squeeze. Don't hurt your knees. Yep, drop and squeeze. Don't hurt your knees. Don't stop. Bye. All right, y'all, go ahead and do me a little favor. Let's count down five. Let me hear you four. Let me hear you three. Let me hear you two. 
Who's what? Number one, that's you. All right, second move, pulse and squeeze. Pulse and squeeze, right there. Now when I say squeeze, I really want you to squeeze those glutes, but try not to hinge, all right? You also wanna make sure those knees stay directly over the toes. And you wanna make sure that you're really loving what you're doing, all right? I'm telling you, love transcends. Put a little love behind it. That booty gonna be stronger. <laughs> Three, you stay with it. Nice, y'all. Let's go. Don't stop. Drop it. Pull it. Drop it. Pull it. Make sure you're pulsing right at the bottom, right there. Nice. Try not to let the knees buckle out. Now, do me a favor. This is gonna help you with the breathing. Smile. All right, I made that up. That doesn't really help with the breathing, but I want you to do it, okay? <laughs> yeah. Nice, y'all. All right, can we do something really, really, really cute? Stay with it. Three, two, we're gonna slow things down. One, two, three, four. Notice the weight is back in the heels, right? Notice the knees never buckle. And notice my attitude. I'm feeling good. I'm telling you why I'm feeling good, because I'm doing something good, all right? Everything I'm doing right now is gonna make me stronger. Why am I mad about it? Let's go. Stay with it. Nice. Now go ahead and make it sexy. There you are, there you are. You gotta have the eye of the tiger. Yeah, with its eye on its prey, right? And its prey being the highest version of yourself. That's what I want for you. I want you to see the highest version of yourself and don't you take your eye off of it. You deserve this. You deserve this workout. Now, here's what I want you to do. We got one more move and we're gonna do this exact same motion, but we're gonna do it in the bridge position, right? But before we get there, Go ahead and do me a favor, drop it low. Nice, push the weight back in the heels and hold it. We got a static hold. Now listen, sometimes in life, the hardest thing to do is to be still. One of my favorite quotes is be still and know, all right? You gotta be still and know that something is working on your side, even when you're not moving, like right now. If you're looking for maximum muscle growth, Stay still. Try any type of static hold. Listen, my thighs are burning too, but that's what I'm here for. Come on, give me 10 seconds. You got this, we got this, she got this, he got this. However, let's go. Five, four, three, two. Who's number one, baby? Like I said, we only got 10 minutes. So, I shouldn't say we only have 10 minutes. We have 10 minutes! All right, take those palms down, bridge it straight up. Let's get it, here we go. Up, down, up, down. Oh wow, yeah, up, nice. Down, here's the thing. A stronger glute equals stronger back, stronger knees, all right? So really, really think about that. Even though the primary muscle we're working are the glutes, I want you to focus on keeping that rib cage down and squeezing the core, right? Nice, take it up, up down let's pick it up just a little bit nice you got it bridge it up drop it low come on y'all i know you got more in you if you're not moving to the beat it's okay as long as you're moving remember that walter told you this movement is medicine all right go ahead and get your healing right now all right y'all y'all ready to mix things up watch your boy it's pulse and drop so same exact thing we did in that squat we're doing now. Pulse and drop, nice, pulse. All right, I'm gonna give you a second to enjoy it. Drop, drop. <laughs> Guys, first of all, thank you so much for showing up. Not for me, but for yourself, I'm proud of you. Nice, drop it low, you got it, baby. Nice, drop, let's go, let's go, nice. Drop, don't give up on me and I will not give up on you. Keep it up, we're almost there. Who said you couldn't get a great workout in 10 minutes? Not Walter Kemp. I never said that, okay? As long as you're moving, you're doing it, baby. Let's go. Nice, y'all, stay with me. Few more seconds here, nice. All right, now let's slow things down. You remember this? You remember when we slowed it down? Nice, so same exact thing. You want to milk it. And you want to think about curling under with the hips, right? And coming all the way up. When you come up, lock out and then release. Yeah, there you go. You feel that? That's called living, baby. 
We're almost there. Oh, Walter Kemp, AKA the Booty Builder. I'm serving it to you right now, y'all. Release it, release it, release it, release it. Now curl, curl, push, 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 push. Now release, nice. Now listen, if you really wanna level up, you can always add weights. You can always add weights, all right? There's always a way to level up around here. That's our motto at Obey. You can either level up or you can keep it cute with me. Where y'all at? Release it. Nice, y'all. Take it slow. I know sometimes it's a lot to slow down, but tell me, it's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> Let's go. Take your time, y'all. Easy come, easy go. You want to take your time with it, all right? And can I just say this? If nobody's told you today, I'm telling you now, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Let's go. Nice, y'all. Stay with Walter. Drop it low, come on. Nobody move, nobody gets hurt, you got this. Nice, bring it all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, nice. About 20 seconds left here. I know you feel like you've been here forever, but you have not, all right? Keep your focus on me and let the body do what it do. Hey, nice, y'all. Here we go. Listen, this is the perfect add-on to what you're already doing, or if you're just pressed for time, I'm telling you. 10 minutes will really, really get you right. It's got me together. Nice, y'all. Hey, five, four, three, two, one. All right, y'all, remember what's next? Tell me. That's right, static hold. Go ahead and grab that booty. Push it up. Lock out, squeeze the core, drop the rib cage. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my arms right in front of me. Nice. Try not to arch the back, family, all right? This is a great moment for you to maybe close your eyes and maybe manifest something. Like, maybe see yourself getting through this workout with a smile on your face. Maybe you see your higher self. Maybe you see your stronger self. I want you to see it in your mind because if you can hold it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. Do not give up. Lock out. Lock out. And when I say lock out, I'm not only talking about physically, I'm talking about emotionally, I'm talking about spiritually, I'm talking about mentally. Lock out. Do not budge. Do not let them knock you down. Do not budge. You got this. Say that. I got this. 10 minutes. I can do this, Walter. I know you can, baby. All right? Three, two, one, take it low. All right, y'all, we have our final push, all right? Our final push is a narrow bridge, all right? We're almost done. I want you to bridge it up 15 times as fast as you can go. Go, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. Hold it in ten, nine. Eight, I love y'all. Seven, that's my favorite number. Six, let's go. Five, eight, four, I'm doing this for you. <laughs> Three, yeah, two, and remember that you're number one at all times, nice. Go ahead and take the legs out, bring the arms up, and use the core to rise up. All right, y'all, until next time, trust and believe. We at Obey, we're rooting for you. Peace. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So, it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Good evening tonight from Geneva, just hours away from his historic summit. Over 16,000 unaccompanied children tonight in custody. What's victory look like in this? Or what does improvement look like? It's going to be a challenge to meet that 70% goal. Why is it so challenging? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright.
We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oda is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers. New meaning. See the expression? Rise and shine. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome to your five minute cool down lower body stretch. Here we go, let's start with the hips. Let's go ahead and rotate that hip right there. Let's open the hips up nice and easy. Repeating it on the right side, open, nice. We're gonna do it to the left two more times, all right? Left, right, left, and right. All right, now we're gonna take it down, all right? Using the elbows to push the knees out, all right? Now go ahead and do daddy a favor and just rock side to side. Nice, y'all. Just open those hips up. That's going to help you so much. How y'all feeling? Now's a great time for you to take a deep breath in and let it go. All right, so go ahead and take that right palm, touch the floor. The opposite hand is on the knee, right? The opposite leg is completely straight. You want to make sure that knee is directly over the toe. Now let's squeeze that core. Nice. Now do me a favor and straighten both legs and send the nose to the knee, release the head. You're gonna get a nice stretch throughout that hamstring. Doesn't that feel so good? Three, two, bring it right back down. Here we go. Now I want you to turn and open it up, right? Using that same elbow to push that knee out. Now we're gonna switch sides using that opposite elbow to push that knee out. And we're gonna go into that high lunge once more, right? So go ahead and turn it around. One hand on the floor, one hand on the knee. Opposite leg is straight. Nice. Here's another moment for you to take a deep breath in. Nice, exhale. All right, go ahead and straighten both legs. Release the head. Nice. Three. Two, let's go ahead and bring it to the front nice and slow. I want you to release the head while you're in this position. Nice, go ahead and take the hands, wrap them around the ankles and pull. Nice, go ahead and bend the knees, slowly roll up. When you come up, remember who you are, and most importantly, remember whose you are, nice and easy. All right, bring those feet in. Nice, we're gonna repeat that again, starting with that hip opener. Rotate that left hip out. Nice, and we're gonna rotate that right hip out. Now I wanna go ahead and switch it up on you and I wanna bring the hip in, okay? So set up, plant yourself in the now, and rotate that hip in, nice. Now go ahead and rotate that right hip in, that left hip in, excuse me. Now right, nice, now left. Nice, now you should feel a little bit more warm than you did before. And we're gonna repeat that same hip opener using the elbows to push the knees out. Go ahead and bring your hands to a prayer position and rock side to side. Hey, has anybody ever told you they're proud of you today? I wanna to say I'm proud of you for showing up, all right? Go ahead and cool it down, not only physically, but mentally, take your moment. Nice. Three, two, one, same exact thing, but instead of the high plank, we're gonna drop the knee to the floor, all right? Taking the palms and placing them on top of the knee. And I want you to slightly hinge forward. You feel that? That's you. Say yummy. This is that yummy method, y'all. Now just breathe here for 10 seconds. 10, nine, eight, seven, it's so good. Six, five, Four, three, two. Remember you're number one at all time. Push it back, beautiful. Come right back up, switch, drive it, push it. There you go. Can you say yummy? That's the yummy method. There you go, you feel that. Try to keep those hips completely square. Don't let the rib cage expand. Now do me a favor, flip the toe underneath and push it back, nice. Release the head as you come down, beautiful. Nice, nice. Now go ahead and take that right knee right on down. You're gonna go into a child's pose, pushing the hands out, sending the hips back and releasing the head. I like to call this surrendering to the body, nice. 10, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, 
two, let's come to all fours, flip the toes underneath, down dog, walk the hands back, bend the knees, slowly roll up, and bam, there you have it. Walter Kemp from Obey is rooting for you. Hey. You want some sauce? Yeah, he likes sauce. All right. We well, thank you, sir. God bless you. Come on down. Sometimes mistakes can turn into the best thing, especially when cooking. Beautiful. All right, give me a good brush on that, my dear. That's what I'm talking about. My name is Stefan Diarmin. My nickname is the Reverend. I like to say Revy Rev. I was living in Mobile, Alabama when I decided to move back to Charleston. My father had been back and forth in the hospital. And when I came to visit, I really saw how my mom's condition was as far as her sight. She's legally blind, but she cooks and she bakes. It gets a little tough, but you know, it's, it's your parents. You gotta do what you gotta do. I joined the Coast Guard right here in Charleston, and I retired in San Juan, Puerto Rico. One Eighty Place is a homeless shelter here in Charleston, South Carolina. Little did I know that it would mean so much to me and become such an integral part of my life. When I got here, I didn't have the funds to come in and get a place, pay first month, second month, deposits, and all of that. So I talked to a VA social worker in Alabama, and they told me, well, if you could put your pride aside I can get you in the shelter. I said, whatever it takes for me to get home to my parents. I was blessed to be able to go to the veterans dorm. This place have saved my life and many others. Being homeless is a different animal. It's not pleasant. You can't sleep with one eye open. So being homeless, you don't get the rest that your body needs for you to be able to be successful, or even productive in life. 180 Place has many great programs, including the culinary program, which I went through, which led to why we're here now. So my job is to take the trainees that come through the program and give them a crash course in how to behave in a kitchen, how to work in a kitchen, how to survive in a kitchen, and turn that into viable income. Chef Angie Dupree, we have a friendship and a bond that lasts a lifetime. Southern hospitality to its truest meaning would be something I would use to describe Stefan. Just making everyone feel special that walks into a room. That's my girl. I've always loved to cook. I used to hang around my mother, my grandmother, and I loved it. He is the reason this program works. He's somebody I talk about at every orientation now for every new cycle. When I sit down with them, I tell them about Stefan and how he came in and took this opportunity. To him, it was, it was all he needed to really change his life. I was introduced to Charleston Wine and Food just right before I graduated from the program. So it was new and exciting to me. I was looking so forward to it. Chef Angie gave us specific instructions. Local, volunteer and work for someone who is local. Here's your opportunity to get yourself a job. And that's what we did. I remember the event was called Toasted and it was nothing but barbecue. And I walked up, I didn't notice the sign said smoke. I looked at the menu and I said, I've eaten here before. We were sitting right next to the band and the band kicked on and uh, Stepan lit up. I uh, started swaying and clapping and he had his black chef coat and his white undershirt. And I said, sir, you got the spirit. I'm calling you the Reverend and you're coming to work at Smoke Barbecue. So we hired Stefan on as a steward, and uh, we don't call people dishwashers here at Smoke. We call them stewards because we expect a lot more out of a person than just washing dishes. After a few months, he worked his way up to sous chef and one of our pit masters, and we've been with him ever since. So one day I was in the kitchen, and I started prepping to do some cornbread. Well, I reached into the walk-in cooler to grab some buttermilk, 
little did I know, I grabbed heavy cream. So as soon as I poured it in the mix and started mixing it up, I'm like, oh no! Rolling can running. What happened? I said, man, I messed up. And he said, ah, uh, let's go with it, see what it does. Lo and behold, it came out a little bit higher. It came out more moist. It was golden brown. And he was like, wow. We passed the food out so everybody can check it out and say, well, or not, we're going to serve it. And everyone loved it. It really is delicious, moist uh, cornbread, and it's, it's pretty fantastic. That gave Roland the idea of he and I going into business. And now we have the Reverend Cornbread Company. I can honestly say that that mistake in the kitchen turned out to be something that's life-changing. And I found out that I'd be teaching a class at this year's Charleston Wine and Food. It was mind-boggling. Look where you came from and look where you're at now. There we go. Go ahead. I want to do the honey. Okay. Here you go, honey. Thank you. <laughs> For the people that attend the Charleston Wine and Food and their events, they're paying good money. And for them to pay money to see me or have me teach them something, it's, it's amazing. I, really, I still can't believe it. What we're going to do today is we're going to go down to the Superstop and we're going to feed the homeless. It just goes to show you there's nothing wrong with a mistake. It's, it's amazing what happens. I mean, his story, it gives you hope that, hey, look, just because you're down right now, you don't mean you stay down. He took a, an interesting situation, made it an even better situation, and now it is exactly where he wants to be, helping people and giving back. Without hope, you don't have anything. 180 Place gave me hope and an avenue, because dealing with what I had to with my parents, to do something that I really love, which is cooking, it was a relief, you know, it, it was my safe haven. To see people get satisfaction of something that I've created is one of the best feelings ever. When I reflect on what I'm doing, I think about my parents. Just like any child, they would want their parents to see them succeed. But my mom would say, you keep doing what you're doing. It gives me a sense of pride. I swell with pride just to see the smile on my mother's face. And it was a great feeling. It was a great feeling. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Good evening tonight from Geneva, just hours away from his historic summit. Over 16,000 unaccompanied children tonight in custody. What's victory look like in this, or what does improvement look like? It's going to be a challenge to meet that 70% goal. Why is it so challenging? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. nice. We are going to be cheering you on all the way. Oga is going to renew their vows right here. Yes. Cheers to you. Cheers. New meaning to the expression, rise and shine. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What people don't understand about the system is that mass incarceration is real and that there's an aging, dying population and people being warehoused in a way that is not human at all. I have so much empathy and sadness for the younger version of me and that I never stood a chance. I had no way of knowing that life could be better. My name is Rashid Stanley Lockhart. I am a 
reentry coordinator and grassroots fundraiser for Claims and Justice. I first was incarcerated at the age of 15, where I was sentenced to California Youth Authority. I thought that, you know, being incarcerated at that age was just a part of how life was. The only thing that I cared about was whether or not I would actually get to go to California Youth Authority because in some messed up way, I thought I was fulfilling an obligation. Beginning at age 15, Rashid was in and out of prison, ultimately receiving an 18-year sentence for armed robbery. Part of that time was spent at the California Men's Colony in San Luis Obispo, where he applied to be a caregiver for other incarcerated men with dementia and Alzheimer's. So my work with the Alzheimer's and dementia patients began with a cell. If I wanted to go do this type of work, I would be able to have what's called a single cell. We were each assigned anywhere from four to five guys. And on our caseload, from the time that they got up to the time that they went to sleep, we would assist them with their everyday needs. The whole thing of sitting there helping another grown man um, bathe himself and you know helping that person wash their privates and stuff like that. Like that takes, it's not for everybody. It gave me the opportunity to not worry about myself and to actually care for somebody else. In 2012, Rashid was transferred to San Quentin State Prison, where he'd serve out his full term. I became a firefighter at San Quentin for the same reasons that I became a caregiver for people with dementia and Alzheimer's. I wanted to purge, right? But I didn't know that this was going to be one of the most impactful things that I've ever done. During my time as a firefighter, I did CPR on over 50 different individuals. Um, who were all my peers, right? To be doing CPR on somebody that I potentially knew or saw or that was in the same condition as me, gave me a sense of purpose. People probably did think I deserved a second chance, but I did, and I'm trying to make the most of it. And those guys who I was doing CPR on, I'm sure more more than, than less deserved a second chance, and I'll never get it. For those that don't know me, I'm Yaya. Um, like Rashid, we know we share a, a similar story. I first met Rashid, I want to say in the late 90s, and we were in New Folsom State Prison together. I acted as a mentor for younger incarcerated men because early on, uh, elders within the prison community did me the same way. So Rashid was this real inquisitive and curious individual. They say steel sharp and steel people sharpen people. Watching him grow and mature as a man inside has been tremendously positive. Mentors like Yaya are important because nobody knows better what being system impacted is than a system impacted person. And sometimes we aren't brave enough to intervene in each other's life. And the fact that he was has me here today. <laughs> so I get a little emotional. Um, you know, up to that point in my life, I hadn't had many people invested, um, let alone somebody in the same condition. And it just impressed on me so much more value about who we could be and what we were actually worth. So I first got involved with Planting Justice back in 2013. Rashid met the founders of Planting Justice while enrolled in the Inside Garden program at San Quentin. And I just said, hey, you know, how you guys doing? You know, I haven't seen you in years, but I'm getting ready to get out. And they said, Rashid, whatever you need from us, we got it. And then they sent a letter of employment for me back into the prison, um, verifying and saying that I would be employed with them once I got out. To walk out of San Quentin Prison was the most freeing moment up to that point in my life. There's this period of time when people get out and it's called a high risk period of time. And if we give people employment once they get out, the chances of them returning back to prison goes down tremendously. Planting Justice is working to tackle recidivism rates in California by providing jobs to formerly incarcerated people. 75% of its staff has served time. Rashid works with those who are just re-entering society. I am tasked with providing um, resources and networks to people who are in the entry. And then once a month, I hold and facilitate a circle with our people in the entry to kind of just, you know, do check-ins and 
to see where everybody's at. This is what I hear every time we sit in the circle. You know, without this group, I don't know what I would do. I made a commitment when I was a firefighter and that commitment carried over into being an advocate for change. It doesn't matter, you know, where I've been. It only matters what impact I could maybe have and that small chance that I help somebody change their life. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this bipartisan infrastructure deal? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Adults like to characterize Gen Z as an apathetic generation and we don't care about social issues and we're just on our phones all day. But in actuality, Gen Zers, especially black organizers and activists right now are using social media to organize millions of people all around the world for this cause that we're fighting for, which is black liberation. And previous generations have failed us and have failed this country. And Gen Z is not going to wait anymore. We, we don't have the luxury to wait anymore because our lives are depending on our actions. My name is Nupal Kiazolu. I'm 20 years old and I'm the president of Black Lives Matter Greater New York and founder and CEO of my national campaign, Vote 2000. I've been an activist and organizer since the age of 12 years old. So I've been in the game for eight years. I like to call myself a young veteran. Sometimes I feel much older than I actually am, but I've been a part of many different activist organizations. And as a child, I was always very intuitive, always super, super articulate and outspoken. And a lot of times it used to get me in trouble when I was younger because I just did not shut up. So, and my mom would even tell me, like, I used to read the newspapers and I'd be telling my mom about the current events that's in a newspaper at five years old. So I've always been, like, very political, even before I knew what it meant to be political. New details in the investigation into the shooting death of Florida teen Trayvon Martin. The 17-year-old died from a single gunshot wound to the chest, fired from intermediate range, according to an autopsy report reviewed by NBC News. The FBI is gathering information and evidence as part of a civil rights probe to find out whether or not Martin was shot by George Zimmerman because he was black. So Trayvon Martin's case definitely wasn't the first incidence of police brutality that I've heard of or I saw on camera. But at 12 years old, I was starting to be able to understand what that actually meant. And when I saw Trayvon Martin's case and what George Zimmerman did to him, it was absolutely inhumane and I was angry. 
and I couldn't fully articulate how I felt at the time, but I knew that I was angry and I had to do something. And that's when I came up with the idea of holding a silent protest at my middle school. And I came to school with my hoodie on and a message taped to my back, do I look suspicious? And eventually I ended up being written up ironically by my history teacher. And the only ally I had throughout that time was my math teacher. And this woman literally risked her job by marching down to the principal's office with me in solidarity with her hoodie on. And we debated back and forth with the principal for a few hours. And instead of suspending me, my principal had me go home and have my case ready for him tomorrow. I looked up my First Amendment rights and then I came across the case Tinker versus Des Moines, which in short is a Supreme Court case that established the right for students to peacefully organize within school grounds. And that was the focal point of my argument the following day when we went right back to the principal's office in the morning. And I ended up winning the case. And when my teacher and I went to the cafeteria to get lunch, literally every single student in there had their hoodies on with the same exact message. And my teacher and I just stood there and cried. And that's when I knew that being an activist and organizer was my calling. We need to live. We need to live. My brothers need to live. My sisters need to live. The common things that I faced is misogyny and ageism, and obviously racism uh, from other white counterparts that happen to have been a part of those social justice organizations. And it was definitely frustrating up until I came in contact with Black Lives Matter Greater New York in 2016. What should we watch for to find out whether this Geneva summit was worth it? What would it take for you to support this bipartisan infrastructure deal? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Talent and perseverance inspiring America. I've been preparing for a moment like this for my whole life. I have lots of songs and lots of stuff to share. I want to show my daughter what it's like to overcome adversity. So many reasons to cheer for that young lady. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. I definitely didn't walk into the organization looking for any titles. I just wanted to do the work and be respected. And when I met the, uh, the former president, his name is Hulk Newsom, he immediately saw the potential in me and really helped me amplify my voice in the work that I do. The entirety of the seven hours that we were driving down there to Charlottesville, Virginia, every thought was running through my mind. I'm like, what if I'm killed? What if I'm arrested in a state that I'm not from? It was just so much anxiety. And a lot of people ask, what did you tell your mother at the time? And what I told my mom is I went, I was going down to Charlottesville to protest against white supremacy, but I didn't tell her that the KKK or neo-Nazis would be there because I didn't want to scare her. And I'd already made up my mind. I, I had a feeling in my heart that things weren't going to go as well as we hoped for them to go, considering the circumstances. Like, I didn't expect for anybody to be killed that day. And for dozens of people to be injured, including me, I did not expect for it to get as bad as it did. Watch out! Right there. Calm. Like? Breathe. Like? Breathe. At 17,
19 years old, I never thought that I'd have to come face to face with a neo-Nazi or a KKK member fully robed. But that's the reality of our country. And our country likes to portray itself as this post-racial utopia. But Charlottesville is the perfect modern day example amongst a plethora of other modern examples that we are not where we are supposed to be. We're not even close. And that's because we have not even come to the point where we've acknowledged that. Like America has literally put a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound. Racism is a gunshot wound that's consistently bleeding out. And the only thing that America is doing is putting a Band-Aid over it. And they're like, oh, this is not who we are as a country. But I would argue this is who we are. This is who this country is. And until we begin to acknowledge that and what racism actually is, then we're not going to get anywhere. And we're going to continue to go in this cycle. Because we're in the digital age and we're, we have phones that are able to record incidents of police brutality, and a lot of times they do go viral. And when people keep seeing instances of black death and brutal, police brutality over and over and over again, it kind of becomes the new norm. And a lot of people have been desensitized to seeing police brutality videos. But I believe that we have to be more intentional in terms of how we circulate these videos throughout the media. And it can also, and it is very traumatic to watch black death on camera and it be retweeted and reposted millions and millions of times. And black people should not have to be murdered on camera and brutally beaten on camera in order for people to recognize that it's a problem. What I would say to young people all around the world that want to be an activist and want to be a part of this movement towards change is that it's never a wrong time to stand up for what's right, first and foremost, and your voice matters. Don't let anybody try to tell you otherwise. There are so many people that try to stop me and what I have to say because they're like, you're a young black girl from the hood. What do you have to say? Listen, like I can do this. And overall, it doesn't matter where you come from, whatever walk of life, that you may be in right now, you can effectuate change and your voice matters. I came up with the idea in 2017 of Vote 2000 when I held a voter registration drive at my campus and I had to get all four schools on board to bring their graduating seniors down to the library to get them registered to vote. And a lot of them were really irritated because they're like, why do we have to do this? And then somebody said something that struck a chord in me. They said, we already voted for the president. And when I heard that, I was like, oh my gosh, people don't really realize how much local politics actually matter. So that's why I was like, I'm gonna come up with this idea, Vote 2000, it appeals to Gen Z. I'm a Gen Zer, I was born in 2000, and we're one of the largest new voting blocks in this country. So um, in 2018, I was blessed with the opportunity to team up with DoSomething.org. And in partnership with DoSomething.org, we were able to get over 100,000 young people registered to vote. And I was just so, so proud of that. And right after undergrad, I'm going to law school and I'm going to run for the 9th Congressional District, which is my district right in Brownsville, Brooklyn. And then afterwards, going to go right run for office in 2036 for president. As a young black activist and organizer that's been doing this for eight years now, a lot of people would ask me before, who are you fighting for? Why are you fighting? And I would always respond for future generations of young black people so they don't have to experience the things that I've experienced today. I didn't think that I'd see this much activation, organizing and change within my lifetime. And if you would have told me this three months ago, that this many people all around the world will come together in the name of black liberation, equity and justice, I would have called you insane. I just didn't see it. I was fighting towards it. I was hoping that my kids' kids could see it, but I didn't think that I would see it. And now that I can confidently say, and sometimes I get emotional when I say it, that I'm not just fighting for the future, but I'm also now fighting for the present. And 
that's what's most inspiring to me right now about our generation, that fighting spirit within Gen Z, that we're not gonna wait and we're not gonna ask politely, we're taking it. We're taking our lives back, we're taking our futures back, and we're taking our present back. Oh my gosh, there they are. Hey, we are I, all the I way in Tokyo. I could still see them though. Yeah, there they are, yeah, back at home. You guys are watching Today in 30 or Today All Day. We're happy that you are. They, they're on Today All Day, looking for Don't Today in 30. Me. Well, you found us, it's our digital show. There's so much happening here in Tokyo, lots to get to, so let's get to it. All right, that's right, Simone Biles. She's now withdrawn from the individual all around. So what does that decision mean for her future?